Amen. Can we say praise the Lord tonight? Hey, can we say praise the Lord tonight? Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. Good to see all familiar faces in the house. Got a house full tonight. Good to see everybody out tonight. We love, appreciate you being here. All those watching my Facebook, God bless you. And let's remember all of our families in the house with sickness tonight. Uh, seriously, a lot of sick people tonight that need a touch from God. And uh, we took, uh, we've been taking food some this weekend to some people in our church. And uh, God has really blessed that. And uh, we took some today to a family. And it was pitiful having to watch them walk outside to get this food and uh, just not be in their normal selves. It really touched my heart today. And you know what? That's what we're called to do is be the body of Christ. Amen. We're supposed to mirror what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, believe it or not. Amen. We're supposed to mirror his life and the loving kindness he showed towards everybody. And uh, we are to be the real, real people of God tonight. So I thank God for that. Looking forward to the worship. Looking forward to the word. So glad to see you back in the house of God tonight. What a powerful word we had this morning. Uh, God was definitely in it, and I can't wait for tonight what God's going to do, and uh, we're just going to let go, let God have his way tonight, all right? If I can, Brother Shane, would you come get an offering plate for us, please, buddy, and we'll take up our evening offering tonight, and once again, like I said, please, please remember all these families in need of prayer tonight with sickness. I know I serve a healing God. How about you? Amen? We do. Amen? So pray for that, and uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Let's stand tonight, if we would. And get our hearts ready to worship. Uh, but first, let's pray for this offering and that God will have his way in this service. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for this time to be together, Lord. God, I pray right now, God, you'd have your will and have your way in this service, God. Everything that's said and done, Lord, every note that's struck, every song that's sung, God, I pray would bless your heart, Lord. Well, I pray we'd not be man pleasers tonight, God, but let's be God pleasers, Lord, because you matter tonight, God. Nothing else matters tonight, Father. Lord, not these lights, not the microphone, not the sound system, God, but just knowing you personally tonight, God, face to face, God. Let us get a hold of your glory tonight. Tonight, Father. God, I pray for the worship, God. Help us to do the best we can tonight, God, with what we have, Lord. I pray right now for Pastor God as he brings the word later on, God, if you see fit, Lord. Bless him, God. Strengthen him, God. Give him the words of power to preach to his people tonight, Father. God, we love you for all you're going to do in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead, Brother Shane, as you're taking the offering, go ahead and help somebody say it's good to see you in the house of God tonight. Amen. Page 116. 116 tonight. Getting ready to read this one, baby. Come on. Two, three. All right. Hallelujah. Did you come to praise him tonight, church? Amen. We're laying up my treasures in that hole. Trusting, fully trusting in the Savior's love. Doing what I can for heaven's holy love. Well, I'm getting ready to leave this world. Oh, I'm getting ready to leave this world. Well, I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl. I'm keeping my record right, watching. The riches of his saving grace In each earthly trial I his love can trace Oh sure that up in heaven I shall find a place Well I'm getting ready To leave this world Sing it church Well I'm getting ready To leave this world I'm getting ready For the days of pearl I'm keeping my record right Watching
it were not true, I would have told you so. Well, just a little while to linger here below. And I'm getting ready to leave this world. Yes, I'm getting ready to leave this world. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready for the day to start. I'm keeping my record on watching. so heavy and said I sank low then I heard about Jesus what a wonderful hour I'm glad that I found out he would bring me out through his saving power thank God I am free 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 from this world of sin been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm saved, saved, saved by his wonderful grace. I'm glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Anybody excited about that tonight? Amen. Like a bird out of prison That's taken its flight Oh, just like the blind man God gave back his sight Like a poor wretched beggar Who found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out to his home been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm saved, saved, saved by his wonderful grace. I'm glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me. I feel that verse. Listen. Now for a long time I traveled. Think about it. Down a long, lonely road My heart was so heavy It said I sank low But then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful hour I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out to His home Thank God I am free, free, free from this world. 
of sin. Hallelujah. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Wonderful grace. I'm glad that I found out He would bring me out, show me the way. I'm glad that I found out He would bring me out, show me the way. Woo. Ain't you glad you serve a God that brought you all the way out, showed you the right way? Change your heart. Put a new song in your mouth. Amen. That's the kind of God that I serve. We're free tonight. Glory. Somebody shout, I'm free tonight. Such a sweet spirit in the house tonight. Amen. I'm thankful, Pastor, where the Word of God says where two or three are gathered together in my name, that I would be in the midst. Amen. I thank God for nights like tonight. We can get personal with God. That's our real intent tonight, brothers and sisters, is just to get as close as we can to the face of Jesus tonight. Amen. I begin to think about that story where he hid Moses in the cleft of the rock because Moses wanted to see God's glory, wanted to see his face. And God told Moses, in terms that I put it, he says, you cannot see my face or you'll have to die. Amen. That's what he said. He said, but there is a place, hallelujah, by me, amen, where I will set thee. And when I go before you, you shall see my back parts, amen. I say, Father, whatever you want to show me tonight, I'll be okay with it, amen. You know what? Because it's all glory. It's all powerful. It's all holy. God, if I see you face to face or if I have to be hid in the cleft of the rock and see your hinder parts, God, I just want to feel you. I just want to know you. I just want to see you as you are tonight. He's worthy of the praise. Somebody shout glory. Oh, I am redeemed. I bought with the price. Jesus has changed my whole Bye. 
things but by the precious blood of Jesus. Somebody just say I'm thankful for the blood this morning, this evening. I believe God has something in store for us this morning or this evening. How many came expecting God to do something this evening? I'm believing God's going to move some mountains. I believe God's going to bring clarity and revelation unto his people because how many knows that God is still a revelation kind of God. He still wants to reveal and he still wants to call us deeper into what he has for us. So let's go ahead. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise as we transition into the word. Come on now. You can do better than that. How many knows he inhabits the praise of his people? So amen, amen. We're going to be in the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. 1 through 4. Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verse 1 through 4. And when you got to go ahead and stand for the reading of God's word. All right. If you got to go ahead and say word. You got it? Everybody found it? Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 4. Verse 1 through 4. It said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The Lord had anointed me to preach good tithing unto the meek. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Look at you never say all. To appoint unto them that morning sign to give unto them beauty for the ashes. How many are thankful to know tonight there's some beauty coming out of the hell that you've been in? The oil of joy for morning. Look at your neighbor say joy. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. And they shall, look at your neighbor, say shall, build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. Lord, I want to thank you for your word tonight, God. Lord, I pray for the anointing tonight that you anoint my lips, God, and my tongue, God, to proclaim liberty, God. I thank you for the anointing that breaks every yoke, God. Lord, we come to glorify you, your son Jesus tonight, God. We, we decree and declare liberty in this house tonight that the spirit of the Lord has free reign. God, I pray that, Lord, you open the ears to the listener, God, that they may hear what the spirit is saying, God. Your word said, he that have an ear, let him listen, Lord. God, I thank you for revelation. I thank you for understanding. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, amen. And you may be seated. I tell you, I was uh, praying this uh, morning after we'd got out of 
this morning's service, and the Lord just did a 360 or a 180 on me. He turned me around. Uh, I thought that I was going to go one way, but the Spirit began to pull me into this assignment tonight, and that's what it is. I feel it's an assignment, whether it be who's in this room tonight or those that are coming over live stream. As I begin to pray, the Lord began to deal with me on the subject, you've been anointed and appointed. Look at your neighbor and say, you've been anointed. Now look at him again and say, and you're appointed. It's one thing to be anointed, but you've also been appointed. To be appointed means you're assigned and an assignment. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been assigned. There's a lot of us that wonder, what is my assignment? Well, we know that Jesus told his disciples to go forth and make more disciples. We go on into Mark 16. He said, preach the gospel. We've all been anointed and appointed to tell somebody about somebody and the good news of the chain breaker. Come on, is there anybody saying, I know the good news about the man named Jesus who is the ultimate chain breaker. And we often find ourselves wondering the appointment and wondering our anointing. But our anointing and the appointment is to tell somebody about a man named Jesus. When I first started praying about this, the Lord brought me first into Luke because how many of those Jesus said that the same that we just read in Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus says that in Luke. But when I begin to think about this, we often think that what is our anointing? What is the appointment? Isaiah and in Luke begin to describe the account of the anointing. What have you been anointed to do? The Bible tells us the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me. How many stuff I know you've been anointed? You're not empty-handed. To preach good tithings, the good news unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty. Look at your neighbors say liberty. To the captives. And the opening of the prisons that they are bound. When we think about the anointing that is on your life. And what we've been blessed with by the spirit of the Lord. And by a man named Jesus. You're not just anointed to run the church. You're not just anointed to make yourself feel better. You're anointed to change the atmosphere. You're anointed to change the situation. But the enemy gets in our mind and makes us think that the situation is better than the God that brought you through your other situation. But the Bible said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that the anointing will break every yoke. Y'all ain't listening tonight. The anointing will break every yoke. See, the anointing you have is to proclaim liberty where they're bound up there's good news that when you're appointed to walk in because you have the anointing of the Savior on your life to bring liberty to where they're at but the enemy gets our minds and focused entertaining with the groups and sometimes finding ourselves blending in with the mess but that's why we're not breaking chains because we rather than being the one that says no not today devil we find ourselves entertaining entertaining the symptom and wondering why people are bound up and why they can't get set free somebody's got to say but I'm not going to fit in with this mess I'm not going to entertain this mess because the anointing on me brings liberty not captivity the anointing on me brings freedom not fear I wish I had about three or four saints this evening that said the anointing on me is about to change the atmosphere the anointing on me can't blend in when your mess but the anointing on me is going to bring somebody out. Look at your neighbor and say, bring them out. But when you're anointed and appointed, God will often put you in situations that you think, why, God, am I here? Because you're anointed. That ain't the devil that's on you. That's God saying, you're anointed. But the enemy makes us feel because I'm anointed, I should never go through tough times. But the fact of it is that you're anointed, God will put you in the middle of tough time because you're anointed to break the chain, break the link to bring others out. But we live in this dogmatic victim mentality. 
that if you're going through hell or if you happen to sit somewhere that you don't want to be, you think the devil put you there. Let me tell you, no, God put you there to be a chain breaker to show the light of who a man named Jesus is to bring them out of the mess. But see, we find ourselves that when we go through bad times, we want to cry and pout about it. You're missing your biggest moment to get the breakthrough. The Bible said, if you suffer with me, you reign with me. Can I tell you, sometimes God got to see if you're really going to stand on the gospel when it ain't cool to stand on the gospel. It's easy to preach one way when everybody agrees with you, but what about when nobody in the room agrees with you but the Holy Ghost and Jesus? Come on, somebody. Are you able going to be able to look somebody in the face and say, but I know I know the voice of the Lord. I know the anointing on my life, and I'm going to speak unto the people because why there's anointing on you that's about to break the chain. There's an anointing on you that's about to bring freedom. There's anointing on you that captivities are about to be set free. Prison doors are about to open. Chains are about to break. But a body of believers has to believe I am anointed and appointed for such a time as this. It ain't that the world's done took authority over the church. It's not that hell's broke bad and he's about to take over. No, this is the rising up that God's saying I need to know that I know who's in it for the win. Who's in it when it don't sell. Because I can't just pour out my anointing on nobody. I need to know that that you can stand and having done all you can do is stand. I need to know that you can look hell right in the face but still say but, but my God is greater. I need to know when sickness is all around that you can say but by my stride I am healed. I need to know when one door shut that the Bible said where one shut he's opened another door. I need to know that it's not just in hearsay but you know that you know that when all hell breaks loose my God's a way making the delivering God. God needs to know is there anybody willing to stay? God, you can trust me with the glory. God, you can anoint me and not only anoint me, but appoint me, God. God, assign me a task. Assign me a place to go. Else, God, I ain't backing down just yet. Look at your neighbor and say, don't back down just yet. Because the enemy's on your heel. Because something's about to break. Why is the enemy fighting in your home? Because something is about to break. Because why is that? The anointing on your life did not say that devils can keep on being devils. The anointing on your life did not say that they can be entertained with you. The anointing on your life said it will destroy the yoke. And I tell you why the enemy's rearing up in your home? Because this yoke is being destroyed. The enemy has been exposed. But the enemy's trying to get in your mind because if you'll back up, he might be able to work his way back in. But I wish somebody said, I'm about to dig a little bit harder. I'm about to go a little bit. Somebody better say, I'm about to dig tonight. But the anointing on us is to proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of the prison doors to the bond, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I like this better. Guess what? The acceptable year of the Lord. Guess what year it is? 2022. You know what that is? It's the acceptable year of the Lord. This isn't the devil's year. This ain't the year of a midterm election. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. It don't matter what happened in 2020, 2020. 21. It don't even mean it doesn't even matter the assignment that they're trying to push in this year but it's still the acceptable year of the Lord and God has still anointed you. That's why he said not only is it the acceptable year and it said and the day of the vengeance of our God is to comfort them that all mourn. What is that saying? God said I'll take care of the ones that tried to mess you up this year. God's saying I got this you just be anointed. I got this this year. Just keep on looking forward. Is anybody willing to say God's got this this year? I know 2022 looked like it's worse off than it was in 2020 but I got a promise in the word that said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord that the day of vengeance of our God that he's got my back and he's got my front. I wish somebody say God's got my back and he's got my front because he anointed me. Somebody say I'm anointed and you're not only anointed look at him and say I'm appointed. 
But then it said to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. I love this scripture. Because it's telling us not only are you anointed to do some stuff. And it goes on to say even this year. Whatever year it is, it's still God's year. That's right, I said it. It's still God's year. It ain't the depression year. It's not COVID-19 year. It's not the Senate year. It's not the president's year. It's not a re-election year. It's not a midterm year. It's God's year. And when you start looking to God's time, it don't matter when the elections are, when this is. God is never changing. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. But somebody's got to wake up and walk in the anointing and walk in the authority. It ain't good enough just to walk through the church anymore. God's saying, I need you anointed on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Is there anybody willing to say, God, I'll be anointed every day of the week. God, don't just anoint me when I get a mic, but let me be anointed in Food City. Let me be anointed when I drop the food off. Because that little bit of anointing can break it off and set it off in somebody's house. But he said to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of a praise for the spirit of heaviness. Ain't that awesome? Ain't that how God works? He said, you might have been heavy, but you're about to get a garment of praise up in here. Somebody, if you got a praise, I wish you'd praise him real quick. That's some of the problem. None of us willing to praise him. And you're wondering why you can't break through. Well, praise is your weapon. What is the enemy trying to keep you from doing? Praising him. Is there anybody willing to say, I'll praise you through the storm. I'll praise you through the hell. That's why I'm anointed and I'm appointed. And when I begin to praise ye, the Lord, it said he inhabits the praise of his people. I wish somebody go ahead and invite God into your mess today. I know you invited the devil. You invited all the gossip. You invited everybody on your phone book. You've invited everybody on Facebook. You've introduced all your mess, all your hell. Oh, I, somebody better do this. Oh, I better sow this. I wish somebody praise the Lord and invite Jesus into your circumstance. Oh, is there anybody willing to vet, invite God into your circumstance tonight? We, Whether if you know it or not, you inviting somebody into your mess. Why not go ahead and invite God into your mess? Because he's the only one going to break the mess, change the mess. What does the enemy do? He wants to keep you heavy. He wants to keep you laden. He wants to keep you weeping. But my Bible said weeping endured for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. I wish somebody would say it's about that time that the clock's about to strike midnight. I might have been weeping yesterday, but joy is coming this morning. I wish somebody go ahead and break out of your victim mentality. I wish somebody go ahead and say not today, devil. Hunter, get on that organ. I wish somebody go ahead and say not today. I wish somebody go ahead and break your chain loose and say I've been anointed and I am appointed. Devil, you can't take my worship. Devil, you can't take my weapon. Cause hell's getting nervous this this evening. I wish somebody go ahead and say I feel something shaking. I feel some water troubling. I feel the kind of thing that said Lazarus come for. I feel the kind of thing when prison doors shut but a midnight praise is raising up on somebody I wish somebody go ahead and say I got a midnight praise raising up I know there's a mountain praise but I got a midnight praise that the gates were locked lock me up in a prison but I'm about to praise my way out I wish somebody say I'm about to praise myself out I feel the Holy Ghost tonight the Bible said that's what the enemy wants to keep you bound up. Look at your neighbor and say, not today, devil. The enemy wants you to keep on looking back at yesterday, looking back at all your mess, looking back at all the hell. But my Bible said, don't look back once you put your hand to the plow. Keep on moving forward. Look at your neighbor and say, don't look back now. Let me tell you, there's something about to break in your favor. There's something about to shift in your favor. Because I've been anointed and I've been appointed. I wish somebody go ahead and change your garment. Weeping might endure, but the joy is on the way. If you got joy tonight, I wish somebody praise him in this house and say joy tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I feel something tonight. 
the Bible tells us not only am I appointed, he said, I know there's going to be bad times. Look at your neighbor and say, I know there's going to be bad times. See, the enemy wants you to feel that God didn't see your bad time coming. Well, my Bible said that, guess what? When you got a spirit of heaviness, God saw it coming, and it gave me the antidote. He said, you're about to trade the oil of mourning, and it's about to produce the joy. Because how you going to produce the joy? I got to change my garment. I got to change what I've been wearing. I'm about to put the Holy Ghost on. I'm about to worship. I'm about to bring myself through. Because God is moving it all the way. Somebody said he moved it all the way. He didn't leave any of it left over. He moved it all out the way. Somebody praise him. I'm in this time for God moves it all out the way. Ladies and neighbors, say all. Somebody say all. Let me tell you tonight, the enemy wants you to feel when you walk out this room that there'll still be a little bit of heaviness. Look, I'm here to tell you, but the devil is a liar. I know the enemy says you can pray through just a little bit, but a little bit of that depression will be left over. You can pray through a little bit, but there'll still be some hell on your back. But my Bible said, who the sun set free is free indeed. My Bible said that when he changed it over, he left the night and the morning in the night. But when the joy came, there was morning. When he changed the season, he left your morning and yesterday. I was somebody praise. He said that you got to put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. A lot of times the enemy will say you can praise when it's lifted. But how many knows that's not what the Bible said? He said with the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. What is he saying? When you feel the heaviest, that's when God's calling you to praise the way. Y'all ain't listening tonight. The people think that whenever you feel it, break off your back. That's when God's calling you to pray. That ain't a true worshiper. Isaiah said when I'm at my heaviest moment, when I'm at my heaviest moment and the enemy's about push me all the way down. When the enemy about made me quit, I'm reminded I was anointed to open up door. And when I get to the heaviest moment, I feel something shift. Somebody better say, I feel something shift. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel something shifting. I might have been heavy. I might have wanted to quit, but I'm starting to praise him. I'll praise him because he's good. I'll praise him because he brought me through. I wish somebody praise him in this hand. But the enemy says when you get light enough, when the shackle finally gets loose enough, he'll let you praise it. And I tell you, praise is going to break the chain. Your praise is going to lift off what the enemy's put on you. That's why the enemy said, if Ethel ever praise God, then she's about to break loose. If Shane will ever praise God, he's about to break loose. But in the back of your mind, it says when you finally lick this and kick this, you can run the church and shout. I don't know about you, but you can praise him while you're still bound up. Because when I praise him, I'm set free. Because when the praise goes up, the glory comes down. Somebody praise him in this house. I wish somebody say the praise goes up but the glory's coming down. See, that's why the enemy don't want you to look up. Because when I look up and I start praising, glory comes down. And when glory comes down, devils get exposed. When glory comes down, strongholds get broke. I wish somebody send a praise up and say, but the glory's coming down. There's something about a Sunday night. How many is thankful that it don't take 150 for God to show up? It takes two or three people that said, I've had all I can handle. Hell's about took me out. I'm tired of hearing negative Nancy. I'm tired of wondering if God's going to break it. My Bible said I'm anointed and I'm appointed. And if all I can do is praise him, I'm going to go ahead and praise him. I wish somebody say this is the last thing I got, but I'm going to go ahead and praise him for what he's gonna do. Somebody praise him in this house. <laughs> With the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness. 
Look at your neighbor and say, tree. When you think about a tree, that means I'm rooted. Bible tells me in Psalms 1, be like a tree planted beside the waters where its leaves would not weather. You're in season and you're out of season. What am I trying to tell you? What maintains the tree? The praise of the people. Because when I praise him, it brings the rain. When I praise him, it brings the glory. And I'm rooted and I'm not moving. Somebody say, I'm rooted. I'm on somebody better say, Say I'm rooted and I ain't moving because my leaves are in season and they're out of season. What is that saying? You won't find me in any season being unfruitful. You won't find me in a season being dry. You won't find me in a season wondering why. Because why I know what reminds me of what he brought me through. And if I got to praise him all by myself, then I'll praise him all by myself. Because when I praised him this morning, he reminded me I was here when I praised him this morning he reminded me I was anointed somebody say I remember but the planning of the Lord that he might be glorified when we think about all them saints say when I think about it you know Daniel I love Daniel but they came to a point that Daniel was a mighty man of God and they couldn't find nothing wrong with him. They made a decree that said, Daniel, you can't pray right now in this season. How many knows that some of your enemy, they don't want to kill you. They just want to shut your prayer life down. I won't mess with you as long as you don't pray. But Daniel said, but there's something you don't know about me. And I got to pray unto the one that brings me through. But it seemed like somebody was looking through the window. Ain't that about some religious people looking through a window. Yeah, they saw him praying and they went and told on him. And then it looked like the enemy had him right where he was supposed to be. They pulled him in and they put him in the lion's den. How many knows that some enemies put you in a lion's den? And they said that they shut the stone and they sealed it. And they kept him there overnight. And they said that God started talking to the king. They said, listen, you better go check on Daniel. And when he went to roll the stone away, Daniel was sitting there and the lion was sleeping. Because what am I trying to tell you? There's power in the praise. Don't stop praising just yet. You might have been put in a den, but that lion's sleeping. Because the joy of the Lord is filling that place. Somebody praise him if he showed up. When we think about what Jesus, how he moves, when we worship, your worship doesn't excuse you from the tough time. Your worship doesn't excuse you from the trial, but it'll, it'll invite God to the man. And I tell you, the reason he put you in a den is because he knew you would praise him in the den. You know why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went to the fiery furnace? Because he knew he would praise him in a fiery furnace. You know why Paul and Silas got put in prison while preaching the good news? Because the Holy Ghost in them knew that they were going to praise their way through. And I tell you, it's not that the devil puts you where you were at. God knew you were a true worshiper, that you could worship him in spirit and truth. God will put you in a prison to worship your way out of a prison. God will put you in a lion's den to keep on praying. If I wish somebody say, I'm a true worshiper. I don't know what's about to happen, but I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I wish somebody say, I feel something stirring up. Somebody tap your neighbor and say, I feel it tonight. We often find ourselves wondering. But I want somebody to know tonight, God chose you for a reason because you're a true worshiper. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of them put on worshipers, but I'm looking for some real worshipers. The Bible said that the hour cometh that the true worshipers shall arrive, that they will worship in spirit and in truth. God's looking for some worshipers that can worship them, worship him in a valley. Worship him at a Red Sea. Worship him when all hell breaks loose. Because why is that? Because your worship 
is a weapon. And I tell you, when the word meets the worship and the truth and the spirit align, hell gets served noted and people get set free. But they got to get a worship back in the atmosphere. I wish somebody say, go ahead and start with me. I'm going to worship him because he's God. I'm going to worship him because he's been good. Let your neighbor say, I got an appointed praise. If we look in the book of Acts 3, verse 6 and 10, it said, Then Peter said, Silver and gold, I have none. Yeah, I, you know, some of us be like, Well, they couldn't meet it the way I want it. But how many knows that's not where the story ended? Look at your neighbor and say, That ain't where the story ended. He said, Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. I can't get you a food box this week. I can't pay your bill this week. But he said, how many knows, but there was something else coming that day. Because there was an appointed praise on the way. I got anybody saying, silver and gold, I have none. But an appointed praise is on the way. Uh, it said, silver and gold, I have none. But such as I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's is there anybody saying but what I can is there anybody saying that what I can though I might not be able to pay your bill I may not be able to give you food but what I can give you somebody better understand what you got I know that the enemy says you ain't got no money you can't do this and you ain't no good but just like Peter and John I ain't got silver and gold but what I can give you is something about to rattle the gates of hell what I can give you is something about to make you walk right what I'm about to give you is about to know that you know that Jesus is the rock of ages I will somebody say I know that I know he said but what I can give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up look at your neighbor say rise up one more time look at your neighbor say rise up rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankles and his bones received strength look at your neighbor say I'm about to be lifted up tonight there's some of us been sitting at the gate beautiful that you've been asking and you've been begging. You're saying, Lord, I can't do it. But somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to get up from where I've been sitting. I'm about to get up from this place. I'm about, somebody say, I'm about to. Huh. Verse 8 says, and he was leaping up and stood and walked. Look at your neighbor and say, walk. And he entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. That's an appointed praise right there. Look at your neighbor and say, that's an appointed praise. And it said, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Oh, y'all ain't listening. God don't just want you to walk right. He wants you to praise. Oh, y'all ain't listening. We got a lot of people that know how to walk with God, but they don't know how to praise with God. I wish somebody go ahead and say, I'm about to praise him in this house. But he was walking. Go on now. Go on now. It said they were walking and leaping and praising God. Y'all ain't listening. If some of y'all just caught that, it ain't just good enough to walk with God. You got to learn how to praise with God. See, the enemy makes us think as long as I'm walking and talking, but you're missing the key ingredient. Not only do you walk, you got to praise God. Because there's an appointed praise that there's somebody watching and looking. They don't want to just see you walking, but is anybody willing to praise you? He was walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and what? Praising God. There's a lot of us still walking with God, but you left your praise a long time ago. Listen, there's a lot of us still reading your Bible. There's a lot of you got a lot of insight and knowledge. You're walking with God, but you left your praise at the last place he brought you through. I wish somebody say, I'm about to pick my praise back up. I'm about to pick up what brought me through. I think I remember now on that midnight hour, somebody praising. Verse 10, 
And they knew that it was which sat for the alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which, they, at which had happened unto him. There was one preacher, he tells me, Brother Chad, Pastor Chad, he always tells me, that gate beautiful. It's just not a beautiful gate in the Hebrew. It's the appointed time. When you know the beautiful gate, it's the gate of appointed time. And I tell you, you've been sitting in the right position. You've been waiting on the breakthrough. You've been right at the edge of the appointed time. But can I tell somebody, get ready, get ready. Because your help is on the way. But you got to get up and learn to praise it. You've been sitting at the gate of an appointed time. Every year it's walked by. Every year you might have got on. But can I tell you, you're about to get a touch from the one that you'll never have to want again. I wish somebody say this is my appointed time. This is my appointed prey. I'm about to walk out of this thing. I'm about to walk out with my mind. I'm about to walk out with the victory, but somebody's got to praise. Psalms 150 verse 1 and 6 It said, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Mm. Somebody look at your neighbor and say power. It said praise him in the ferment of the power. Is there anybody that can say, I know that I know he's got power. I know the power of the Holy Ghost. I know the power of the cross. I wish somebody go ahead and praise him for the power that set you free. Praise him for the power that saved you. It said, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the posturies and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the organ. <laughs> Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Now listen. Let everything that had breath, is there anybody still breathing? The last I checked, you weren't six feet down. The last I checked, it might have been a bad day, but there's still breath in your body. And the last way that David said it, he said, if you got so beat down, you forgot about the power. If you gotten so beat down and you can't play the instrument, he said, but there's one thing that you can always remember that he ended out this Psalms with. He said, let everything that had breath Praise ye the Lord. I wish somebody say, I still got breath this morning. That the weapon might have formed against me, but it did not accomplish. There's still breath in my body. And as long as there's breath in my body, I can speak to that mountain and it's got to move. I wish somebody praise. But it's time to break out. Look at your neighbor say, it's time to break out. Tap somebody, say it's time to break out. Because I know we've been going through some good stuff. That you've been anointed and you've been appointed. That when the spirit of heaviness, you got to learn to praise him all the time. We know that God's working. We know we're sitting at an appointed pray, An appointed time to get up and walk and praise God again. But first you got to break the chain. You got to break the cycle. Is there anybody willing in here tonight to say it's time to break some cycle? There's been some things in my life that the enemy keeps throwing up that when I finally get peace, that kid comes back around and makes me madder than hell. Oh, somebody better get right. When I think I got my mouth sanctified, that old daughter of mine knows how to make me want to cuss her out. Come on, be honest. And when I want to pray and I want to seek him, them grandbabies know how to yank on my leg and keep me out of the present. But somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to break the cycle. Oh, somebody. Isaiah 52 2 says, Shake thyself from the dust. Look at your neighbor and say, Shake. You know that song? They used to say, Shake, take these shackles off my feet so I can dance. I wish somebody say, No more shackles, no more chains. I am what? 
free. God ain't wanting to keep you bound up, but the Bible didn't say that God was going to shake you. He said, shake thyself. I wish somebody go ahead and shake yourself loose. People would got the enemy saying when God was shaking, but the Bible said, shake thyself up. I wish somebody go ahead and shake yourself. Ah, uh, you ain't listening. Shake that depression up. Shake that mindset up. And rise. Somebody rise. It said, shake thyself from the dust. Uh, somebody got to shake yourself and all that dirt off of you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what the enemy wants. He can only mess with dirt, and that's what he wants to bring up. Have you ever noticed dust is what the earth is what the enemy fell on? Dust is a symbolic of of all your mess. It's the symbolic of the world. It's the symbolic of the enemy and all the things that keep you bound. The Bible says, "Shake thyself from the dust." What is he saying? Shake yourself off of all what they had to say about you. Shake off all the things that tell you ain't going to happen this year. Cause when you get done shaking the dust off. God's about to raise you up and sit you in a place of authority. But God don't want to carry tampered, dirty things into something holy. So shake yourself tonight. Say, I'm not carrying last year with me this year. Sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bonds of thy neck, O captive daughter. O captive daughter. What the Bible say? I'm anointed to what? Proclaim liberty to the what? Captive. What's the symbolic of the neck? The neck's where the oxygen flows. Let me tell you, Jesus, God, it will always flow. What does the enemy got to do? He's got to try to cut off the flow. Because it don't matter if the brain's trying to communicate. If you cut the flow off of it, you'll strangle it. Because not that the brain's not working right. There's something around the neck that's keeping it from flowing to the rest of the body. And see, a lot of times God's trying to communicate while you still got the vices of the enemy and of the depression hanging on your neck. But the Bible said, I can shake that thing right off. And the moment that you shake it off, the Holy Ghost starts flowing. And when the Holy Ghost starts Starts flowing, power shows up. And when power shows up, you get set free. I wish somebody go ahead and shake off what's been trying to kill you tonight. I mean, I can say there's been some things trying to kill me tonight. Y'all ain't lying. Y'all better be honest up in here. Some things have tried to kill you. It's often you thinking it's just an attack. No, 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 no. That devil wants to kill you. There's some things in this life that want to choke you out spiritually. But I came to tell the devil he's a liar. It's time to break out of that fire. Break out of that trap. Break out of what the enemy done. See, and what you don't understand is, is that if you're trying to fight something in the natural... trying to pull it and you're trying to pull it away and you don't do it just right it'll end up cinching tighter you ever notice that you're trying to run and you're trying to fight and if you run the wrong way and you try to do it the wrong way it'll tighten there's a restraint on your neck See, the enemy works like a thief in a night, and he works slick. He restrains the flow. You ever notice that sometimes it doesn't just start off total oxygen kill? Because if that would have happened while you were fresh, you'd punch that thing and you'd get loose. He zips it a little tighter as it goes. Before you know it, you start getting weaker. You get methodic. Because why? The enemy's got you in a trap. He's starting to trip off the neck. And little by little, he's cutting the flow and the oxygen and the source of the body. But when you finally realize, I'm anointed to break this. You ain't got to run. You ain't got to do this. Just look up and shake, and God will loose you from the chain. I wish somebody stopped trying to run left or right, because that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to run this way, because he's tightening the string. You run this way, he's tightening the string. God sometimes just wants to know, can you look up in the middle of the hell, shake yourself and praise it, and God will break the chain. Somebody say, break the chain, break the chain. But we live in this mentality. I know that it said looking under Jesus. Run your race and endurance. But sometimes God wants to know if you can look up and praise right in the prison. Come on, somebody. God wants to know if you can look up in the middle of your hell and praise him. Sometimes God don't want you to run forward. He just wants you to stand and praise. Oh, Y'all ain't listening. Uh, you better know your season. Sometimes you got to learn just to stand, look up, and praise him. And God's about to shake yourself free. Somebody praise him if he shook you free. It's time to shake the dust off. 
Bible tells us in Matthew 10, 14, it says, whosoever shall not receive you. See, a lot of times, not everybody will get you. Hey, anybody honest to that? Not everybody gets me. I'm kind of what you consider peculiar. I like to praise a different way. I take things a little different. You broke the mold. You were something different. You can't fit in with the church of God. You can't fit in with the Baptist. You can't fit in with the Holy. I'm my own mold because why is that? I'm God's man, not your man. And see, some people ain't going to be down with what God's doing. But he told us in Matthew 10, 14, whosoever shall not receive you, yeah, yeah, the, he shall not receive you nor hear your words. He don't say keep going back and trying to get him to listen. He said when you depart out of that house or city, it said shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. What am I trying to tell you? Because the Bible said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. There's some people trying to put you in a grave. There's some people trying to conform you. And they ain't listen to what the Spirit is saying. But all I got to tell you to do is shift yourself, shake your feet, and keep on moving. Because God is faithful. He is just in who he called. Somebody to say he's faithful this night. But you better be careful. Look at your neighbor and say, be careful. Let your neighbor say, don't let your enemy silence you. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Esther chapter 4, verse 14 tells us, for if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. Everybody knows this. God's saying, if you remain silent, deliverance will come to the people from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Uh Uh-oh. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. What is this Bible verse telling us in Esther? God's saying, Esther, I have anointed you and appointed you for such a time that I brought you into a royal position on the behalf of God's people. And he says, but if you're going to be quiet, then I'm going to bring them deliverance from another place. But your house will perish. Y'all ain't listening. I wish somebody say, God don't let it be another place. God don't let you choose another house. But God, I'm reporting for duty. Somebody say, I'm reporting for duty. Don't let the enemy silence you. Because God made it clear, just like he told Esther. He said, if you're going to be silent, I'll bring deliverance to the people. But I got to do it down the road at another house. But for your house, you're going to perish. I wish somebody say, don't let my house perish. God, don't let it take me out. But God, I'm going to open up my mouth and praise the Lord. I wish somebody open up your mouth tonight. Your neighbor say it's about that time. Look at your neighbor say it's about that time. You've been anointed and you've been appointed. But the enemy's got you seesawing but two opinions. Just like Elijah said, if Baal be Baal, then you serve Baal. But if God be God, we serve God. But we serve a God of fire. Let me tell you, God's not looking for a generation of debate. God's looking for a generation to put it to action. God's looking for somebody to say, go ahead and go get the water. Go ahead and get it. Let's set it up because I know it's going to show up. He's looking for some people to open up their mouth. This ain't the season for you to get quiet. Let your neighbor say, don't get quiet yet. Because that's like where we ended, Esther 414. For if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. God is faithful enough to say, if you ain't going to open up your mouth, if you ain't going to decree it, I care enough about the people, I'll just have to appoint another person. But in this is an opportunity. 
Because God said this position just didn't come out of nowhere. I didn't raise you up just so you can say, I'm a son or a daughter of God and I'm happy and I'm just going to mind my own. He brought you into position for such a time. He anointed you and assigned you because what is in you, God chose just for you. There'll be assignments and there'll be things in life that God chose me for my obedience. There'll be things for Judy, Morgan, Ethel, Leanne, Shane, Katie, Hunter, Courtney, Frank, Summer, all the ones that are here and then it goes on. There'll be times in life that God said, I put something in you that only you are chosen for that one. But God loves that one enough that says, if you ain't going to open up your mouth, if you're not going to choose to know that you've been anointed and appointed, they're still, I'm still going to raise them up and set them free. But for your house, it'll perish for your lack of obedience. But I'm thankful to know that in those moments, we still serve a merciful God, a redeeming God, reconciliation. And some of us, our house, it seemed like it was going to perish. But I hear the Lord saying, I'm renewing it. Because God is a God of second chances. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, don't forget, I anointed you. And you've been appointed. Don't question the call that only I could give. But in the middle of the heaviness, don't lose the praise that brought you through. And don't let the enemy silence you. Because there's freedom coming. The captive are being set free. Not because of what we are. But the, one, the anointing and the obedience. How I many knows that the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice? I know there's a lot of us that know how to sacrifice. But is there anybody willing to say I'm willing to be obedient tonight. And adhere to the voice of the Lord. So we're going to go ahead and open up the altars. If you need prayer tonight, come forth. We want to pray with you. Those over live stream, we thank you for being with us tonight. We're praising. We're praying for all your needs. I believe God's raising up some mighty uh, women and men of God, even through the means of live stream. I know, God, we have a, a lady in Philadelphia that chose to make this her home church in Philadelphia. We may never see her in this fellowship. But by the technology and the things God's allowed us to reach out, that even though we're here in Rossville, we got brothers and sisters in Philadelphia that are equally minded with us. We're praying for our Philadelphia brothers and sisters that God is moving down there, up there. We're believing that right now that chains are being broken. But I believe God's raising up a body that's saying, I'm going to worship him when my spirit is heavy because I know I've been appointed and I've been anointed. So if you would, everybody stand. We're going to worship.